for us. Oh! Do what we do. <laughs> Don't make anything up. There we go. Now you're working. The way he's consistent. You know, he's always the same. Driving and then back inside. I almost popped the Achilles right there. <laughs> Just competing. That's, that's, that's the, um, the standard we have just to compete. I should be hitting and lifting together. You felt that. Yeah, you did. Ping pong match, you know, basketball shootout. You know, he has something always to keep everybody in training. You know, Dwight Freedy talked about at the Super Bowl, he, all his years in the league, he never looked forward to team meetings <laughs> as much as team meetings with you. But, you know, when, when coordinators leave successful franchises, become head coaches, expectations are so high. So for you, particularly on defense, what was the key for you to change the culture? Honestly, uh, for us, how connected our team could get. And uh, there's leaders at every level, and that's defensive line, linebackers, DBs, coaches as well. So that connection amongst the players, the coaches, how fast we could pull guys up to speed to be the best versions of themselves as players and coaches, um, that's a lot of work. And you got to know each other well. You got to communicate about it things you want to improve on and, and share that with one another. Well, you say how fast can you get it done, but I'll turn that into speed is a yes. big thing too. What was sort of the, the main criteria as you're adding players and all those young players that you had starting for you on defense? What's the main foundation there for the types of players you wanted on defense? Number one, we were looking for toughness, and we wanted to add that at every spot that we could. But the speed part of it, uh, it's one thing to run 4-5, can you play 4-5? And uh, so that kind of speed with the toughness, add that two together, that's your run and hit, and you can create more takeaways, play faster, play more aggressive, and that's the style that we want to play. Yeah, and then the, your philosophy personally on defense, and we talked about it at the Combine, that at one point in the season you, you took over the play calling. What was missing that you needed to find? I was hoping we could get to a bigger connection on our team. And uh, as we went along, we started to gain some confidence. Uh, players, bigger, bigger communication, linebackers to secondary. But honestly, it was the guys, their communication, their commitment to one another, uh, doing the extra things to, to improve upon. So I thought we got better as the season went on uh, on both sides of the ball. And that's what you want as a coach. Right, those numbers that you're looking at there, those indicate that. And then heading into this year's draft, once again, it was – it was that philosophy of toughness. So, so you guys move up to take the defensive end out of UCLA, Tack McKinley. What, what was some of the dialogue behind the scenes about this kid and why you wanted him? And that's what uh, having a, a good partnership with Thomas uh, as we go through, you know, free agency and the draft together. We knew uh, over the first couple picks we wanted to add speed to the team. And uh, tax speed and his toughness, we thought we could add another pass rusher. I don't think you'll ever hear me say we have enough pass rushers. <laughs> so we were looking, and he was one that uh, we were instantly connected with, the toughness he played with, the speed. And we had a really clear vision of how he'd play on our team. And he's such an inspirational story. I mean, really, I mean, unimaginably difficult background. He comes into a situation now where now he's – He's a millionaire. This is a kid who, who didn't even have a bed until he went to UCLA. How do you manage that behind the scenes? Honestly, uh, he's going into the best possible environment he could. And uh, so the guys on his team already want to you know, help show him uh, what they're expecting from him and him in return. So it couldn't have been a better spot for him to come in with a group of men who are ready to help challenge, to push him to be the best version of himself as well. So we're excited about where he can take it. One of the big things about TAC, too, was mentors he's had throughout his yeah. life because there really wasn't a parent figure with the mentors. Tell us how Jeff Ulbrich, your linebackers coach, can sort of play a role in that as well. We're fortunate that uh, Jeff Ulbrich, who had a connection with him at UCLA, uh, that bond you know, was already there. And then Bryant Young, um, who played so long in this league at defensive line, is his position coach. So between the two of them, uh, both of them played over 10 years. Both of them are you know, totally committed to see you know, and help him be the best that he can be. So honestly, he's stepping into a great spot of teammates that are, you know, want their locker next to him to help. So uh, it's a pretty cool brotherhood that, that uh, he's getting indoctrinated to. When we spoke to you at the Combine, your new offensive coordinator, Steve Sarkeesian, that was all brand new. Yep. Now that you've sort of had some time to see him engage and kind of get into the groove, what makes you feel this is the right fit? 
probably the thing I admired the most about from a work ethic standpoint, he wanted to really dig in. And the very first day, he asked, can I get all the games loaded on my iPad? We weren't going to have him come back. We had just you know, finished. I said, the staff is gone for two weeks. He wanted every game to dig in and find you know, the similarities of what he's done in the past to what you know, we did last year. And it was probably then that I knew we had the right man for the job. Uh, he wanted to go back. He had such... Um, appreciation for the job that was done on offense and he wanted to add wrinkles to that in addition to what we already do so it's been a great transition for us well that's the point you had the league mvp and it's no secret that it took time for matt ryan and kyle shanahan to sort of learn each other right. and know their strengths so how do you progress what's the next step off of mvp in that kind of season well, for guys like Matt, like better never rests. So what do you do to find ways to improve? And honestly, for Matt and for Sark, be really transparent in terms of Matt going through, I really love this concept, here's what I like. And then Sark can also kind of, these are just some of the things I like too. So that mesh between the two of them and another guy who's been a big factor in that, uh, who has a big role in our team, we don't talk about a lot, is Matt Schaub. And uh, what a top shelf guy who totally supports Matt Ryan in the way, but can also be a good bridge for the coaches as well. Right. He would have had opportunities to, to go elsewhere, too. He also knows a good thing, right? And uh, honestly, having it. those two together, um, you can imagine the challenge and part of that. But uh, it's been a great fit so far. Right. It's Tuesday, right? Your first day of OTAs. Yeah. So you get, first time you get your offense and defense going against each other. I'm sure you're pretty anxious. Yeah. That, right? It's uh, honestly for me when I'm happiest out on the field coaching.